Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show podcast. If you're a mom, have you ever thought, wow, it's really tough being a mom? It's also tough being an entrepreneur, and it's also really tough being a dentist. Well, if you've ever had those thoughts, you're not alone. Today, we talk to two rock stars in our DEP program, our Dental Entrepreneur Program, Dr. Katie Satula and Casey Dorsch, about the realities of those challenges. We call them the triple threat. Today, they unmask the struggles and successes of being a mom, an entrepreneur, and a dentist. Please listen up. I know you guys will enjoy it, and we'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. We're so excited because we're here on the morning of the DEP, the Dental Entrepreneur Program, and we have two amazing rock stars with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. I love this stuff, and um, we've been doing the podcast for a long time now, and I, if you're listening, it's always fun because we get to really go in, inside of what's going on inside of great dental practices. I love the education. We're going to totally geek out on some stuff today. But uh, I want to start here and have both of you introduce yourself, Katie and Casey, who are here for the DEP program, and we're going to be doing the admin thing today. But uh, tell us who you are and share a little bit of your story. Great. Good morning. Thanks for having us here. Um, My name is Katie Satula, and I am a general dentist in Hales Corners, Wisconsin. Um, Graduated from Marquette Dental School in 2015. I bought my first practice in 2017 and bought my second practice in 2020 and merged the two together um, in one spot and then brought on an associate and just cruising along. Now I feel like we're kind of over the hump of COVID and have kind of found our place and moving along. During that time, I had two children as well so um, and moved twice. So little been been fun okay so go back to that i always love to talk about you're a real human so you have and how old are your children our girls are five months and 20 months oh i love it i love it cool cool casey tell us about you all right so my name is casey dorsch i'm a general dentist in green bay um i kind of i graduated from marquette in 2017 and then I kind of hopped around a couple practices until I found my fit where I currently am. And I've been a owner there for the last year and a half and really enjoying it now. Really liking dentistry again. Um, and I'm also a mom of two. I have a little girl who's three and a little boy who's one. Ooh, those are fun ages. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's <laughs> That's very a good way wild. to say it. Yeah. So, and your girls are old? I have. What do I have? 17 and 14. You you survived. You're still surviving. For the hump. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, I love the teenage years. Ooh. So I think it's great. I'll have to tell that to my husband. He's nervous. Do do you really love the teenage years? (laughs) (laughs) I do. Um, It's actually been fine. But what I like about it is they become more adults. Yeah. You know, so you can have more adult conversations and you can go do fun things. And every stage is awesome, as they always say. And, um, but, just so you know, don't be, don't fear the future. It's going to be great. Yeah. I have 22, I have three girls, 22, 20, and 18. And then my son is 15. And I completely agree with that. Yeah. Teenage years are interesting. It's, it's fun. It's got its ups and downs. Yeah. But the every, ups are high. Yeah. Every stage is fun. And then when you get the adult children, that's really fun. You're like, Hey, you want to go to lunch? And your daughters go, yeah. And you're like, What'd you just say? Like, <laughs> like, you they like look, me again. They yeah. look forward to going to dinner and lunch, and then you just laugh at them. You're not so mad. Not, I don't want to say mad at them, but like trying to tell them what to do all the time. Like, don't do that. Do now you're just like, oh my gosh, that's so fun. Um, the worst part about teenage girls is they don't hug you anymore. You know, Aww. when they're ten and they just oh, want to give their daddy hugs. No, now no, it's no. like, I need one hug a day. 
Oh, no. <laughs> like, okay, let's do it. No. <laughs> let's get it done. Well, one a day, take your pick. <laughs> I'm with you on that, and I require them. So, yeah. And, yeah, me and, too. And for the listeners, I mean, here's yeah. the cool thing: you make your own rules. So, I still ask any of my daughter. I go in every night to their room, and I go, "Hey, how much does Daddy love you?" And they go, "So much." Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Even when they're 22, they have to. I'm like, you have to say it. I love that. My, my house, my <laughs> rules. Yeah, cute. <laughs> so it's good stuff. All right, so let's start here. Um, you guys are both entrepreneurs. Talk about that. Easy ride, <laughs> tough ride. Well, I guess I'll start. So, like I said, I kind of bounced around. I was an associate at a, um, two practices and then did community health for about a year. Um, and then kind of joined this practice. I actually didn't really plan on being an owner. Um, my dad was a dentist, so I thought, you know, when when I was planning on taking over his practice, I thought, yeah, I'm going to be an owner. That's what I want to do. And then met a boy, fell in love, moved up to Green Bay and thought, never mind. I want to focus on a family. I kind of want to be an associate and just show up to work and leave. So um, when this opportunity presented, I really wasn't really expecting it and didn't know if I wanted it at first. Um, but I'm really happy I did it. I mean, it turned out really great. Um, yeah, it's been going really well. I'm really happy I did it. I think it's going to help me get to my goals in the future of, you know, make having that good balance between family and work. So yeah, go back to that just a little bit, because a lot of people listening are like, I don't know if I should own. It's a, it's a really, it's one of those things where you have to know yourself and owning is for some people and maybe not for other people. What were some of the things you're just like, I'm, I'm going to own. What were some of the things that just made you decide? So I think. What, so one of the things that scared me was the finances, obviously, right? Like you have a huge student loan debt, a huge debt now from the practice. So that was really nerve wracking. But something that kind of helped me get over that was the thought of like, okay, someday I'm going to be able to say, hey, I'm the owner. My kids have soccer at four o'clock today and I'm leaving. Yeah. And I like really wanted that flexibility, not to feel guilty, not to feel bad, not to feel like a bad employee if I decided to leave early or take vacation with my husband or whatever. So um, the ability to be flexible. And my dad had that. He was a, an owner and he was at every one of our soccer games and he was always there for, like he tried to be there for everything and he still owned a business. So I thought like, that's what I want. I want to be able to have everything, have it all. I love that. Yeah. Katie, what's your thought? So I would say in the beginning of what Casey was saying, I would say I'm the, I was the complete opposite. I knew from the early on in dental school that like that was a big draw for me for dental school is that I could be in healthcare and treat patients and be a dentist and have a fulfilling career, but also be my own boss and own a practice and do all of that. Um, so for me, that was always like my end game, mostly because of what Casey's second point was, is I wanted the ability to have that work-life balance, um, be there for my kids, my family, um, be there for, you know, the, the patients that are in the office and have that. There's obviously pros and cons to it. Yes, I can be there for my family, but you also get a call on Saturday afternoon and sometimes have to go in and things like that. Um, but my, my end goal was always to at some point be a practice owner. Right. I will admit, I didn't think it would come just two years right out of school. Right. Um, but it was a, actually one of my professors at Marquette who I had gotten to know and he kind of called me up and was like, Hey, I'm done. I'm ready to retire. Do you want it? It's yours. If you do, um, I'm fortunate on the other side that my husband is in business and finance. That's his whole background. So we kind of make up a team and the two of us sat down and started looking at the numbers. And that's where, again, to kind of speak to what Casey was saying about the debt, um, I learned the hard lesson of good debt versus bad debt mm -hmm. um, and really being able to like analyze cash flow and kind of actually, I, th I think when you think owning a business, those are some of the, yeah, there's pros and cons, but those are some of the things you, you kind of forget about that there's certain, which we've even learned about in the DEP, there's certain elements that there's key things to look at to say like, no, this is, this is possible and you can do this and looking at what, what debt you can take out and it isn't necessarily bad to take that out. And if cash flow is right and it all the numbers make sense and it, it really can uh, work out. And it's for, for me, I can't say it's hard to speak if it was easy or hard. I think I was, I walked into a very, very 
good practice. Um, I still have several of the original employees who have been some of my biggest champions um, in taking over the practice and have been phenomenal as well as we've expanded and grown and brought on new employees who have all um, kind of fit right in and things like that. So on one end, you hear some stories. I think I've had it easy, but on the other end, like owning a business is hard too, because then you, you do forget about those, you know, 530 in the morning calls that I'm sick and now you're left without a hygienist for the day or the <laughs> walking out the door at seven and somebody comes in in tears because something else happened or now all of a sudden, yep. I don't know, you know, equipment, yeah. a piece of equipment breaks sure. or, you know, there's, there's always, there are some days where you know, dentistry as a whole, doing dentistry is hard, but then there's also some days where I walk out just mentally exhausted from the business side, everybody needing you for mm -hmm. something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you know, if you're listening, you heard some really good things here, and I just want to highlight it. And, and we're going to spend a lot of time on, and we do, and, and naturally is, what are the challenges of leadership, owning your own practice? What are the challenges of being a dentist, young dentist? Um, and what I heard you guys say without any prompting from us was like, and it's totally worth it. And I love mm -hmm. it. And I want to be an owner. And, you know, I, you guys are way younger than us. I graduated 19 years ago. And I graduated Marquette. Most, most graduates that weren't specializing were going to go into private practice with the yeah. idea of owning. I, I don't have numbers in front of me, but I think that that number is maybe reversed now. And, I, you know, I, I personally want everyone to hear, like, go into private practice. Own your business if that's you. Right. Do it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You can do it. And I think it's a path to a great life. So I love that you guys both came to that, you know, in different ways and both now are like, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's challenging. Yes, we have those calls. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. I, you know, I, I hope that there's young dentists listening to this, that it sparks even just a little thought like, hmm, I thought I just needed to go this one path because that's what most people do. Yeah. But I'm listening to these young, successful mom dentists that are doing it. I can do it too. So yeah. it's awesome. You're prompting a whole podcast there. We could do this for two hours because I'm older now, so I don't care to be politically correct about anything. But 26 years of owning act, you're exactly right what you both have said. And it's hard. In the first 12 years, I thought about quitting a lot. I actually made a decision to quit. And until I found some help or some people around me, I'm like, no, don't quit. You know, and at the end of the day, when you work through the challenges, you get around a group of people and you go, wait a minute, this is America. One of my friends said, this is America. Have you ever thought about that? Like no one tells you your fee structure, you can go to work when you want and all that kind of stuff. And you start making that a reality. Then you start to believe in it a little bit. And I tell my kids this, I don't know if this is the right thing to say, but <laughs> everybody talks about job security. I don't think there's any job security anymore at all, ever, unless you own your own thing. And that's my personal opinion. Or you have equity in something because now you have decision-making power. And so, yes, we are, I am biased that mm -hmm. owning your own thing in the United States of America is pretty special, but don't feel bad if you don't. I mean, it, I think the biggest key is that you have to, you have to know yourself. And we're all, totally. hu we're all human beings. One of the things I want to ask you both about is being a mother and an entrepreneur. So yeah. this is a very important topic. We have so many female dentists that are near and dear to our hearts in the ACT dental community. And they're like, you don't understand. And I don't because I'm, 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 a, I'm a male and I'm a husband. And my wife <laughs> tells me all the time, you don't understand. I'm trying to, but help us understand that perspective. Yeah, I grew up also with... Uh professional mom who was kind of a big role model to me as well, raised three kids, um, put us all through not only just undergrad, but also every single one of us went on to get a doctorate in something. Um, and she used to say, I need an Alice, a Brady Bunch. She goes, I don't need a husband. I need an Alice. <laughs> and uh, I, I have now uh, um, that the roles have reversed and I'm the mom now. I have frequently said, I need an Alice. Um, I think she might be retired, though, at this point. She's probably yeah. a little bit older. Uh, doesn't want to come do two under two. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it, it's true. I think nowadays we definitely, um, not to sound biased or sexist or anything like that, but I think men are more involved than they were right years ago. I think dads are certainly more hands-on, um, which is helpful, but I still think the 
the emotional load and the mental load really still falls on the mom. Um, making sure all the bags are set out for daycare the next day and that their hair is done and this and that where dad's like, hey, they're fed. Let's get them out the door kind of thing, <laughs> um, which is great. I'm happy they're fed. Yeah. Um, and so but being able to be a mom, you know, as we kind of alluded to earlier, it's the fact, you know, perfect example. Last week I got the phone call that um, our daughter had been really sick for about a week and she a couple of days in took like another turn for the worse. And they called my front desk and was like, hey, we need to get her back to the doctor immediately and I looked at my schedule and I said hey can you call these two patients and ask if they can come right now and let me get this taken care of and then I walked out of the rest of my day um, and my team handled it and moved what needed to be done um, that does not happen very often but mm -hmm. in the heat of the moment when it needed to happen um, I had that ability to be there for my child when she needed it. And I had that ability to have a um, awesome team that I knew I could walk out and do what I needed to do and they would handle the rest of the day and what needed to go, go on with that. And so I think really the big thing about being a dentist and a mom is creating your village. Um, and you know, you have your people around you in the practice that help you succeed, but you also need your village at home, whether that's in grandparents or your spouse or whoever it may be. Um, but you, you do have that ability to still, you know, be there for your family as things schedule out and this and that to know that, you know, yeah, soccer games are on Thursday afternoons. So I'm going to start leaving at three o'clock on Thursdays or whatnot. Um, in addition, again, it's, I think it's kind of cool. I had an awesome rock star of a mom who showed me that there really wasn't a glass ceiling that you could go as far as you wanted to go. And now having two daughters and looking at them, they obviously have absolutely no idea what any of this means or what mommy's doing now. But I hope one day they'll look back and see that like I can be anything I want to be. I can have it all. I can be a mom. I can have a family. I can have a very fulfilling career. I can be involved in my community. Um, it isn't just, you know, woman stay home barefoot and pregnant cooking soup. It's, you know, you, you <laughs> can have it all. And the having the ability to have an education and a career and own a business and not only that, but have a meaningful and purposeful yeah. career that I'm showing my daughters that they can do this too. Or if you have sons to show them that like what it takes to have a spouse and support them, um, as well as then creating a village around me that's going to support me in both my career and at home is is huge. It's phenomenal. And it's it it definitely can can be a lot at times. And I think um, Casey and I are in a bit of a thick of it with young ones. But at the same time, it's going back to earlier. There's no regrets. It's all it all can be done at the end of the day. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Casey, your yeah. thoughts. OK, so my thoughts on being a mom dentist. So. Um, when I joined my current practice as an associate, I was very intentional about saying, listen, I have, I have a young, young baby at the time, like three months old, four months old. And I said, I want to work three days a week. And that's, that's all I'm going to do is three days a week. And, um, then I became owner and that was still a conversation. I'm really lucky. I have a really great partner. Um, so we were partners in this business and he's great. He has kids, so he gets it too. And um, I told them I'm going to work three days a week. That's it. And they're like, yeah, we get it. And I was like, maybe when my kids are older, I'll add on. And when the senior dentist and the partner in the practice was like, I bet you won't. Like, I bet you'll see at three. And I'm like, yeah, probably actually. Um, but like Katie, I'm really lucky. I have a super, super supportive husband. Um, he's, since I work three days a week, on the days I'm working, he's the one running home to let the dog out. He knows that I'm not going to be done at work at five. Like, I try to be, but I probably have a note to do, or maybe I get called into something and try to be home by, like, 5.30 or 6. I'm not getting home super late, but he knows, like, he's picking up the kids from daycare so we don't get that $10 a minute fee or whatever it is if you're late. Like, he knows he's going to have to do that. Um, and he's really supportive when I want to go to see or if I want to listen to something at night and put my headphones in, like, he's on kid duty and so i'm really lucky in that that he's super supportive um i think one of the hard parts about being a mom dentist is that the ce right like you want to keep up with your male counterparts you want to be going to see you want to be doing all that stuff and i think that's the best thing that came out of covid to be honest is that 
all this like amazing CE across the country is virtual. Like you can do most CE virtually now. And that has been like a game changer because I feel like I'm able to take all these CE that before you had to travel. And that's a big deal when you have young kids and you have to find someone to help watch them or, you know, you have to coordinate all that stuff. It's a huge deal to be traveling and stuff all the time. So that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed that. But um, I think overall, like the day to day, it's the balance. It's like, you're at work, you're feeling guilty a little bit that, you know, oh, I have to work, I'm going to the sea this week and it's a nice week out and I want to have them outside today doing stuff. And um, then you're at home and you're thinking, am I keeping up enough? Like, am I doing enough CE? Should I be working on the business? I have a stack of magazines on my desk right now. Should I be reading those right now instead of, you know, going to the farm today with them? <laughs> so right. um, I think it's just like that constant struggle in your mind's kind of always like back and forth trying to find the balance. and. I don't know that I don't know that you'll ever find it. I think it's always going to kind of be like a well. Today I was probably a better mom than I was a dentist. I yeah. didn't like do anything extra. I went to work and came home, and that was it. Yeah. In other days, it's like I spent all day doing dental stuff, and like my kids were at daycare all day yeah. when I was home doing dental stuff. So. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Any thoughts you have? Well, I told myself you know nothing on this topic, so <laughs> you're not, you're not going to say anything. Well. But um, I, I loved a couple things. I loved that, um, Katie, you said, need your village. Yeah. Right. And so I'm, I'm thinking about your skills as a leader probably help, I imagine, help your skills as a mom because time management, putting the right people around to make the, the family organization work mm -hmm. well. Um, I love, Casey, you talked about flexibility. What, what a great um, reason to be a young dentist professional mom like there is flexibility mm -hmm. so you need to go to the doctor you can you want to say we're going to work only three days you can and that's yeah. one of the benefits of of our awesome profession is you, you can do it right. there are other professions that it's a lot harder you know um and so just another celebration so i love i loved listening to you guys at I have a ton of respect for, I have more respect. I had a lot of respect, now, <laughs> even more for every young dentist mom out there. You, you know, know I, I think, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, you know, the, the other thing is I think having kids makes you more patient and compassionate for right. your patients. Um, before having kids, like, you know, I don't know. I just feel like it's changed me as a dentist. Like when I have young kid patients, I, you know, you don't look at them like, oh, they're screaming and crying and right. trying to be bad. You're like, oh, they're just scared. Like you got to take time with them or you do the tricks that work for your kids on your kid patients and you, you're just more patient and have more grace for people. I think when you're a mom, you just kind of, I don't know, it changes you. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think um, one thing that's really cool about dentistry and I do a lot of like mentoring and having students into my office and things like that, that um, this profession, you can, especially as an owner, you can make it what you want. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've wanted out of this profession and, and being an owner is this feeling that I am truly a family dentist. I am mm -hmm. in the, I live in the community that my practice is in. Um, I run into people at the grocery store and, you know, my kids go to daycare with some patients and, you know, things like that. And it was, I have really strived and taken pride in cultivating this family practice atmosphere. So my practice does have pictures of my kids all over. And um, I mean, when I had my first daughter, the amount of gifts and handmade blankets and just beautiful things that patients got was overwhelming it was mm -hmm. so much and so now every once in a while the kids will be in the practice and my patients think it's the most wonderful thing and they love hearing about them and seeing pictures and i think you know again you can cultivate your practice some people may say hey no i want this is completely separate i am doing a you know high end very the, and that's totally fine because you can gear it to how you want my personal preference in this has been that we are truly a family. So if you walk into my practice on any given day, you may see my husband sitting at the front desk and you may see my daughter playing, reading a book in the waiting room. Um, sometimes even my dog is in the office. kind of. <laughs> um, and so it's just in kind of going back to that too, like I'm the owner, it can be what I make of it. And then the patients that I gear towards who come into my practice are the ones then who value that 
that family aspect and that cultivating of that culture and knowing that I'm going to treat you the same way that I have my own family because we're all a part of this practice. And so I kind of have blended the dentist life and the family life. And I mean, even as we're starting to talk about preschools, I'm like, how great is it that there's one right across the street so I can run over and drop her off and then bring her back for finish up my day afterwards and she can hang out here. And yeah. it's, you know, I have set that culture in my own practice because that's what I've wanted my practice to be. And that has helped me to be both dentist and mom. Oh, you're speaking our jam. I love how you say you, you can make it what you want. And mm -hmm. part of the epiphanies, as you get older, you have all these epiphanies, but we've right. been sharing this a lot. Life is messy. You know, mm -hmm. you would love to say, oh, life is so perfect. And no, it's not. I mean, sometimes your personal life, you're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? <laughs> and when you have a healthy place to go during the day, it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least healthy, where you've got a healthy culture, you've got, you know, clear lines of sight on how we behave, how we talk, all that kind of stuff. It's fun to be able to share stuff. And even I shared stuff with you yesterday, like, I, I just got to tell you what's going on, you yeah. know? And, um, I think the the thing that I'm learning more than anything is you can make it what you want more and more and more so that when life goes in all these different directions, you got, you got to remember, we employ a lot of people and some of the safest places they have in their own lives are coming to your office if you're a dentist. And so never forget, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. and we have the opportunity to give people a lot of peace and sanity and things do work well here. So part of that's being a leader, you know, talk about being a leader. Did you ever know what leadership, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to graduate from dental school and you're going to go out in the world. And I don't know if we spend a lot of time talking about being a leader. What's that mean? Casey, to it was the most, yeah. was the most kind of like surprising thing you didn't expect difficulty in being a leader, positive or negative, I guess. I think, so the thing I think I struggle most with is I'm the female dentist in the practice. There's um, two guys, one's my partner and the other one started the practice. And being a young female, I think one of the things I struggle with is that all, the, the, all our coworkers, staff, everyone else is um, female too. So I feel like I'm the one who like gets the drama brought on. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> so I think just like being a leader as far as if drama comes to me, kind of being able to step back and be like, okay, don't like, you know what I mean? Don't get into right. it. Like you're, you're supposed to be a leader here. So I think that's been like one of the little things that I struggle with is just like trying to like make sure I'm stepping back and being like, nope, like we can't. And I think Barrett, you had the 48 hour rule that mm -hmm. you told us about. Like yeah. if you don't bring it up in 48 hours, you aren't allowed to talk about it again. And <laughs> I've taken that from you yeah. and it's Good. been really nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that's kind of a big thing. I think the other thing is like having a vision for where you want things to go and following, like we're busy, we're, we're with patients all day. We don't have time to sit there and like, work on the practice when you're working in the practice and then you go home and you have the kids and you don't you're not spending the night like at your computer typing away ideas or anything so I think like having a vision and then finding time to execute it and follow through with it and mm -hmm. things like that because I have all these great like I leave these programs and I go back to my office I have all these great ideas I want to do and I'm you know which ones do I want to implement now and it's just like which ones do you follow through on at what time? What does the office need? And then how do you follow through on it so they know you're like serious about making changes? Love it. Katie. Yeah, I would agree with that 100% is, um, yeah, figuring out when is the time to do things and executing them and planning and having lots of great ideas and learning so much. Um, and where do you go with that? And something else I found too is, you know, also being another young female, I kind of came in originally, I had done a lot of leadership for a huge majority of my life and things like that. And kind of always was though, like you did everything right. sort of deal. And so I came into with this mindset that I need to do everything as well as this mindset of like, I am young, I am a female, I need to make sure that they know who's boss and who is going on. And quickly realizing though that a, that's not the best approach. Um, and I still struggle with that. And learning, I mean, I think a huge part of leadership is delegation. Yeah. Being able to 
delegate things properly, knowing when to lead, when to follow. Um, I think I am learning that a lot more, but I also think I really do struggle with it in my kind of day to day. And then I reflect back on a moment and I say, hey, that did that did work out. And it's kind of, I think a lot of us too, to be, you know, to get through dental school, to be an owner, to be in this position, we're a little type A. So we like things done the way we want them done. And kind of our leadership style has been to be at the forefront of everything. And so I think one of the things that I've kind of found that I'm working on and have getting better, and excuse me, and am getting better at, but it's still a little bit of a struggle is like that delegation aspect and you don't have to do it all. And really the best leader is one who has set up a team that can be pretty self-sufficient. And I'm, we're, we're getting there. Um, but yeah, I think that's, and then I come in with new ideas and so (laughs) that maybe changes things a little bit and kind of, yeah, figuring all that execution and just getting a plan and all that. I think one thing that's really has really helped at my practice that we did through act was setting up those core values. Um, and as Casey alluded to getting a vision and a mission and just knowing what your purpose is, because then as you do come up with new ideas or run into new situations or things like that, I'm finding my team now is starting to realize like, well, this is what our practice is centered around. So how can I make a decision on that that reflects that of the practice without having to come to her with every little thing? Um, and sometimes it, it works out. Other times I'm like, you should still come to me. And other times then I take things on. So it's really just finding, I think the hardest part about leadership is really just finding that balance. But I think, um, exactly as Casey said, having a clear vision and core values and goals helps to shape that in your leadership into what direction you're going to go, whether it's delegating tasks, knowing when to lead, when to follow, when to implement new things, things like that. I love it. I love it. What have you learned? So, and I loved how you said, I am learning. And like we, <laughs> none of us have it figured out. We're always learning, you know, and leadership's really like a, an art. And, you know, over the years I've found that just what you said, you have to delegate and you have to trust, you have to we call it, let go of the vine, you know, traction book. Um, we have to listen. Sometimes we say, that's a battle I want to fight today. And sometimes we say, <laughs> that is not a battle I want to fight right. today. Mm-hmm. And sometimes your team asks you of something and you're like, I don't even really agree with that, but I'm going to give it to them because... They need it, you know, and so it, it's a balance, you're learning, it's an art and it takes time and quite frankly, failure. Yeah. I mean, I, any leadership successes I do now have is came from really bad failures, you know, one <laughs> yeah. day and saying, Oh, that did it. Like you said, that didn't work. Yeah. I'm going to do that a little bit differently next time. So that's, the, that's, that would be my pearl of today is just like leadership is a lifelong learning process. And you just celebrate that some days go way better than others. Yeah, I completely agree. You have to screw up a lot before you even know what works. <laughs> right. And so the flavor of the year for me is uh, our coach told us this, you know, the signature of mediocrity is chronic inconsistency. Mm. And when she said that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm Mr. Idea. I'm all over the place. I try this, I try that, I try this, I try that. And so now I come in every day and I try to be incredibly consistent you know, not only for my family, but for, and that's helped us ton. And the second thing that's relieved a lot of the pressure for me is you're not really a leader until you develop other leaders to develop other leaders. Because as a leader, you feel the, the onus, like I got to do all this. I got to inspire everybody. I got to look at the numbers. I got to make decisions. And now I'm like, screw that. I'm just going to grow people. I'm going to grow this person. I'm going to grow this person. I'm going to grow this person. And every time you do, you're like, wow, how'd you do that? And they're like, let me show you. And you're like, that's pretty cool. And so um, our hope is by listening to this, you get a little glimpse of what it's like to own a dental practice and maybe make your life better. And at the end of the day, you still have to be an entrepreneur. So you guys Mm -hmm. are here for the Dental Entrepreneur Program. Tell us what being an entrepreneur, we've talked about leadership, but entrepreneur in the DEP program, what what are you learning today? What have you learned this year? I think the DEP program has really helped me. All those things we just talked about now kind of actually bring it to life and to works. And, you know, like Eric, we were talking before the show, I used to go into my reviews even just being like, how well do you suction? How well, you know, and it kind of, (laughs) even just in one, you know, session here, it was kind of talking about, 
you know, cultivating that vision and the leaders you want and growing people and that. And it's, you know, if there's truly an issue with the performance of the job, that should be addressed long before the review session. So when it came to reviews, we completely switched that into how do you fit into our team? How do you work with the team? How do you fit into the culture and vision of this practice? And once I had a clear mission and vision and core values and things like that, it was very easy to quickly see how each employee fits into that or doesn't fit right. into that mm-hmm. and what we need to do to get them to fit into that if that's possible. Um, and one thing too, it got me to reflect on is, you know, sometimes I'm telling employees, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And it's starting to be like, I have told you this three times now. Why are you not getting it? But as the leader, it's had me learn different things through the DEP to reflect on that, to say, okay, what am I? I now doing wrong that this person isn't getting that. And it's allowing me to reflect on how can I help you? Let's sit down. And it's even been a matter of bringing in other team members to help with this situation and kind of bring it in. Again, I feel like a broken record going back to saying like these core values, but that was one of the biggest things that the DEP brought to me was that you can own a business all you want, but if you have no vision, no goals, no mindset of where you want this to go and what's going to shape it, how can you expect all your team to get on board? So once we did that, once we went through our new review process, what I learned through this that got amazing feedback from my team, things really like shifted in our office a lot. And then not only that, going back to kind of our first point about like running a business and can you do it and the debt and all of that, I've learned to be able to really look at certain key things and poll reports and see where we need to improve and kind of know that it doesn't all have to be done, but sit down with the person who does the ordering and say, hey, let's try and let's try and cut this back by two percent over the next month and just start to get small, measurable goals that brings in other members of the team. So I'm starting to delegate more, learn more. They understand what the value is. Um, They're cultivating that. I'm trying to grow leaders. And that has stemmed from like each and every session of the DEP. I've pulled something out that we've been able to implement immediately into our practice to then continue to kind of hopefully start to shift things and change things a bit. Yeah. I want, you said it a couple of times, one of my favorite things, core values. And I, it sounds like that has been important to you. In the industry, I talk to a lot of people. I use the word core values almost every day, all the time. And 90% of the people I go core values, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what we're really talking, and they just go like, put it over here. Mm -hmm. How important has core values been to you and your overall health of your practice? I mean, huge. <laughs> there's there's really no else to say that. It's been very instrumental um, from everything from just, again, the way that we look at when we have um, the couple interviews I've done of new employees. Um, first thing they get at the interview is these are the core values of our practice. Um, and I explain what each one of them means to both our personal and our professional lives of the practice. Um, it's getting the team on board with getting excited about what I want to do and where I want to see the practice go. It's keeping the team, helping them to stay engaged and be excited about their role in the office that isn't just day-to-day come in and scrape teeth or hold a suction. It's taking a little bit of pride and ownership on that. Um, And then at the same time, them kind of seeing the benefits of that. Now, all of a sudden, having a fun team outing to go do something fun. And we have, you know, we've, we've seen an increase in the practice. So we're giving that back to our team to be able to go do some team bonding and go out for an evening and kind of spoiling them. And I think it just overall creates an environment that they want to be there and kind of take pride and ownership of the practice. And at the end of the day, we're there to treat patients. And then that's reflected onto our patients. Each and every day we have somebody say what, how excited we are to be there. They're laughing along with us. They're telling us how well we work together. They're, from the moment they walk in to the moment they walk out, they know who they need to talk to about what because we've created clear expectations amongst the team that the patients are seeing that right away. And it's reflected and created then just better care for our patients in our office, which we can talk about all we want about leadership and goals and this and that. But at the end of the day, that's why we're there to be a dentist is to treat our patients. And when you've created that in the core values and people get it and get on board, 
you've created a better dental practice and are a better dentist in office. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing it. Casey, what are you learning in the Very DVD? well said, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I am very fortunate in that I joined a practice that a lot of that stuff was kind of set up for me, right? So um, I joined, the practice had really good core values. We have a really good, we have great systems. We have good, you know, a lot of that's been thought through for me by the dentist who started the practice, Dr. Hank. He's, he did a great job at setting everything up. So I kind of got to walk into it and the ship kind of steers itself already. Um, maybe that's a downfall in my leadership is that like it steers itself. So maybe I don't know all the little nooks and crannies that I should because they, everyone does such a good job. I mean, we, we've had people that we just had someone who just celebrated 35, a hygienist who's been there for 35 oh, years. And awesome. we have a really great, great team and all of that. So from the DEP, I think I like, I get little nuggets here and there. So like a lot of the stuff you talk about is things we're already implementing, which is great. It kind of reinforces what we're already doing, which is really helpful. But then I take little nuggets from each session too. And, oh, we don't do that. That'd be interesting to add that on. Or um, I'm going to kind of go in a little different direction. Part of my favorite part about this program is like when we get to like do office hours or have lunch or something like that, because you get to talk to all these other dentists and that's where I think you start really learning stuff. You talk right. to them about their practices, what they do that works and little ideas they had or things they tried. And I think that's a huge benefit too, is just to have this like little community where we can ask each other questions or, you know, you, you've said things in the past, like make your car, your classroom and things like, like just those little nuggets like that. I feel like I've definitely taken those in a lot um, from the program too. So very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Bear, what are you learning watching these dentists go through the DEP? Now I'll just say this before you answer. He's the architect <laughs> behind it. He designed this with the Wisconsin Dental Association and Marquette. And you had a vision for this. What are you seeing now? I love it. You know, and just in, in hearing the feedback from you is really helpful. And, and I mean, why are we doing this? It's to, to help private practice dentists at dentists that need a little extra help. Leadership's super lonely and running a dental practice is super lonely. And I've walked through that path. So I know it firsthand yeah. and I could, I could see it with Marquette and WDA and saying, we've got to provide, we've got to provide a path for these young entrepreneurs just to have, to know, like, a, you know, I love what you said, the community that you're not alone, that there's other people that are exactly where you are, that understand exactly the challenges you're going to. And let's take our collective experiences and our collective intelligence and what you and, and myself have learned over many years of doing this. Let's put it together and help one another. And we're getting, you and me, Kirk, are getting better by doing this. And hopefully the, you know, the, the members of the DP are improving a little bit too. And Anytime we can get a bunch of people in the room and all get better together, it's a success. Yeah, I love it. I get inspired today. It's going to be fun. We're going to go crazy. Today, we're covering the <laughs> admin part of the practice, which is often the most neglected. And so we're going to spend an entire day through admin processes. Yeah. I mean, we're going to cover a lot. He gave me the workbook yesterday. And I'm like, this is, well, actually he gave it to me on Monday. Yeah. I'm like, this is amazing. We're, we're never going to get through this right. in one day. Right. Um, but, but the uh, workbooks are set up phenomenally. I think good. at most of our office hours, you say, if your head's spinning, it right. should be. And right. I'll admit, sometimes we log off on those after an hour. I'm like, give me four more. And <laughs> right. you, my head is spinning and you're overwhelmed. But then it's like the resources then that ACT provides that we can just you give us a taste and then allow us to kind of, yeah, dive into what is particular to our office and that to start researching a little bit more. Going through the workbooks are set up so nicely. Um, I still reference the one from our very first meeting, you know, and kind yeah. of just to go back and, you know, expand on our own mm -hmm. with what we've touched sure. on yeah, in there's, that. There's a lot of information. It's like drinking from a fire hose <laughs> yes. sometimes. And then you, That's yes. by design. Then yeah. you go yeah. back yeah. and you look and you're like, okay, yeah. let's take that a little slower. <laughs> yeah. We, we always say like, I've in part of this is I've been to a million CE courses where it's like, that was six hours. It could have been two. 
Right. I want ours to be, that was six hours. It could have been 12. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but Kurt, close us out here. Katie's um, uh, Apple watch just said time to stand up. Before. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> it's, yelling, <laughs> it's yelling at I, me. I, Wait, I, I, I have like nine more questions. <laughs> All right. I know. So. so I think, uh, I think uh, Katie needs to stand. I need to stand up, stretch the legs. Yeah. So. And actually the course starts in three minutes. Yeah. So we, that's really what you're trying to say. Yeah. So, yeah. That too. So, All right. so close, thank, close us out. Yeah. Thank you guys for being on. I really well, appreciate you being here. So well, thank you very much. Much. And thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show podcast. If you enjoyed today, do us a favor, hit the share button, share this with your friends. Make sure you check out the DEP. If you're a dentist thinking, how do I do this? I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I should own. I don't know if I should be an associate. Come hang out with us in the DEP. You'll feel very supported. You'll get to see other people and you can make your own decisions about your future and you can create what you want to create no matter what you decide to do. So. Absolutely. Uh, check all that out. If you're not taking notes, we're taking notes for you. You can go down to the links and uh, in the show notes and you'll see all the links. You can click on them. It'll take you right there. So until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy your day. 